Our scripture this morning is Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17. We're taking a brief break from Mark to look at the baptism of Jesus for this special Sunday. And to understand the importance of baptism. And yes, I am aware that with everything going on, that it will take up some time in the service. So the timer for my sermon is at 17 minutes. As opposed to the normal 30. Uh, but hear now the Word of God from Matthew 3, verses 13-17. through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by Him. John would have prevented Him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to Me? But Jesus answered Him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then He consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Now, Lord God, still our souls and give us peace. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds that we would see, that we would receive, and that we would understand Your Word, Lord. Amen. So with this being a special Sunday with six baptisms, the question that is often asked is, why do people get baptized? Well, first, we see the, the command in the Great Commission that Jesus gives to us to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, that this is a command that Christ has given to us, and that is um, sufficient reasoning. Um, that our perfect Lord and Savior does not say anything by accident, but everything He says is intentional and true. But when we look at baptism, we understand that you know baptism is not necessary for salvation. After all, we see the thief on the cross who was one minute, he, he was hanging there for his crimes, uh, for whatever he had done, and was cursing Jesus. And then the next minute, he is saying to Jesus, remember me. And Jesus says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Uh, there's no, no evidence of this man being baptized, and yet he still made it to heaven. And so that while baptism may not be necessary for salvation in the sense of a, a deathbed conversion, baptism is necessary for the Christian life. Uh, that if you're expecting to wake up tomorrow and to live, and then wake up again the next day and live, and the next day and years from now, and you've got plans for your life and what you want to do, baptism is necessary for the Christian life. And we see and we understand this because of Jesus' baptism. And so this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, Matthew goes from his birth, and then the very next chapter, he's being baptized. And we see that John is out there in the wilderness, and he's baptizing with the baptism of repentance. And Jesus comes, and immediately John recognizes Jesus, and John says, you don't need this baptism. This is a baptism of repentance, Jesus. You're perfect. You don't have to repent because you've never sinned. But Jesus says this is necessary in order to fulfill all righteousness. And so what does He mean by this? What does it mean that this is necessary in order to fulfill all righteousness, even though Jesus was sinless, even though He was perfect? What does this mean? The word righteousness appears 117 times in the New Testament. And only twice is the word used in the sense of doing what is required of you. The first is here at Jesus' Jesus baptism where He says this is necessary in order to fulfill all righteousness. The other one is from the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3 where he is speaking about his former life as a Pharisee, and he says that if anyone has a right to boast, it's him, because he was perfect as a Pharisee. He was blameless as the way of the law goes. And as far as the demands of the law, he was perfect in everything that the law required. 
And so only twice is this word used. One is used by Jesus when he says that it's necessary to be baptized, and the other time is when Paul is saying that he did everything that he was supposed to do. But after Paul says he did everything that he was supposed to do, what else does he say? He says, I consider all that garbage in comparison to knowing Christ. I consider all the, the, the keeping of the law, I consider all the, the moral up brightness and all the, the good stature that Paul had. He says, I consider this loss. It's rubbish. It's garbage. It's nothing compared to knowing the righteousness of Christ. And so what Paul is saying here is that it's not his ability to do everything right that is worth boasting in. But what our great boast is in is that Christ has done everything and so Christ does not say he needs to be baptized and that this is a requirement for him to be baptized and that it is somehow lost or that it's garbage or rubbish the same way that Paul did. But we have to understand what Paul is saying because of what Christ did. That because Jesus Christ fulfilled all righteousness, we have no righteousness of our own. Because he did everything that was necessary, there is nothing that we can boast in of our own self. But everything comes from Christ. Jesus did everything that He was supposed to do. He did what was required of Him. And so did Paul. But at the end of the day, only one is worth it. Only one is worth boasting in. And so we come to this understanding that baptism is ultimately about what Christ has done for us. That baptism is not First, about what we do. That yes, uh, you make the decision to be baptized and you go and you learn about what baptism is and then you actually get to the day of baptism and you, you, you profess faith and you reject sin and then you are dunked or sprinkled or poured or whatever and you're baptized. But ultimately, it's not about what you do. It's about what Christ has done for us. That He fulfilled all righteousness on our behalf. That He did this for us so when we are baptized, we are joined to Christ. We are joined together with Him. And we are made a part of His covenant community, which is the church. That's why when you get, when you get baptized, you automatically join the church. That they aren't two separate things because you become the body of Christ by being joined together with Christ, by partaking in what Christ has done for us. But we also understand that the righteousness of Christ is not just His baptism. Jesus doesn't just say, this is necessary in order to fulfill all righteousness. Fast forward three years, He dies on the cross. No, in order to fulfill all righteousness, it wasn't just His baptism, it was His life. It was the perfect keeping of obedience. It was the perfect keeping of the law. It was all of His perfection and everything He did. His perfect love for the Father, the perfect love for His disciples and even for His enemies. And even as we get to the cross, the cross was necessary to fulfill all righteousness as well. That as Christ goes to the cross, and upon Him every sin is laid, past, present, and future, my sin, your sin, everybody's sin is laid upon Him. And becoming sin, He dies bearing the wrath of God that is owed to sin. What happens? The wrath of God is satisfied in the death of Christ. The law is satisfied. The demands of justice are satisfied. The fulfillment of righteousness is done, but it doesn't just end there because He rises again and He proves that life is greater than death. God is greater than Satan. Righteousness is greater than sin. That He is victorious over all things, becoming necessary for us. This is why it is said by Paul in Romans 6, that, though, that uh, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by glory of the Father we too might walk in newness of life. When we're baptized 
It's not just a simple thing. It's not just a little symbol. But there is a deep meaning. That you are baptized into the death of Christ. That your old self, in some sense, dies. And you are raised to life. Because Christ was raised to life. Because Christ fulfilled all righteousness. Because He secured our salvation. Because He was victorious over everything. And all of this began with His very own baptism. So just as we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into His death. And Christ being perfect, He has imputed to us His righteousness so that upon our salvation, our great boast is like the Apostle Paul, that we can stand in the mirror and look at ourselves and we can say, yes, I did all this and I did all that. But at the end of the day, my great boast is in Christ who has done all things. That His righteousness is enough. That He has done all things. He has fulfilled all righteousness. We know that Christ and all that He did was enough to save us. And we know that we are saved by grace. And because Christ has been baptized for us, and because we are joined together with Christ in baptism, there is grace in baptism. Grace is communicated to us. There is grace to sustain us. Grace to transform us. Grace to lead us in all holiness. And yes, there is even grace to save, to impart salvation in some cases. The righteousness of Christ was required for us on our behalf. So what do we make of all these instructions to be righteous? After all, I said there are 117 times the word righteousness appears in the New Testament. We've looked at two of them. Well, a majority of those other usages are in the sense that we act like righteously as a response. Meaning that the same Christ, the same God who fulfilled all righteousness, gave us the command to be holy as He is holy. So what does this mean? It means that as, we, as Christians, as, as baptized believers, we do not say, okay, I've been baptized, let me go do whatever I want to do. Let me go live however I want to live. But we continually put to death our sin. We continually take up our cross and follow after Christ. We put behind us all unwholesome talk. We put behind us gossip and slander. We put behind us every sin that ensnares us. Of anger. Of taking the Lord's name in vain. Of lust. We look at this world that we live in. And it's not difficult to see what's righteous and what's not righteous. But it still remains that as followers of Christ, we act righteously as a response to Christ fulfilling all righteousness. Not because we need to do it on our own part, but as a joyful response that Christ has done this for me. I get to do this now. I get to live a holy life. I get to love my neighbor. I even get to love my enemy. I get to respond to God in obedience. I get to put to death my sin. I get to turn away from everything. From anger. From hatred. From deception. I can turn away from the wickedness of this world and turn to Christ because of what He has done for me. So, why baptism? Why is baptism necessary for the Christian life? Because Christ said it was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. And in fulfilling all righteousness, we are baptized into His birth, His death, and His resurrection. We are joined together with Him. We receive grace to live in this unrighteous world. And we are joined to His body. So for our six who are being baptized, in a little while, you will go over the baptismal vows. Please actually hear to what's being said in those vows. Don't just say, I do, because you want to. But actually consider and listen to what it means to reject sin and to live for Christ. Amen.